Leinster versus La Rochelle feels massive and it deserves a preview all of its own now that we've got the teams for this game that's going to be happening. Cannot wait for it. I'm <laughs> just seeing the teams. There's so much to talk about. So I want to get into it on this channel. Give your thoughts down below in the comments. If I were a fan of La Rochelle or Leinster, I would see the teams now and the butterflies would be going in my tummy. Uh, incidentally, I've been asked quite a lot in the comments, who's your team then, Tim? Genuinely, I don't have a team and some people don't believe me that that's the case. If I did have to pick a team, it would have been London Irish because my brother used to play for them. But because um, I used to play every Saturday playing rugby, I, I never followed a team. Um, but I, I kind of wish I did on weekends like this because it must be amazing to be a Leinster fan or a La Rochelle fan, for example. And that's what I'm going to talk about on this video. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers. Tell me your thoughts on the team for Leinster. Um, well, I mean, where do you start with this one? I'll go through the talking points in no particular order. Ross Byrne at 10. I guess no massive surprise. Some people were thinking Harry deserved the nod. Kieran Frawley is the lone outside back on the bench. A 6-2 split. Josh van der Fleer on the bench. Will Connors is starting. That's a huge call. We'll talk about that in a second. I did wonder if Jack Conan may be in line to start in the starting 15 if they, if they were going for a bigger bodied side and also just because he's an awesome player in his own right, Jack Conan. But no, it's Will Connors that comes in. He was playing brilliantly before Christmas and I can see the logic in it. Again, I'll talk about it. Let me just go through the selections. Jason Jenkins in the second row. No James Ryan, of course. He's a massive loss, but again, a bigger body over Ross Maloney, who starts on the bench this week. Uh, Gary Ringrow still unavailable. That's probably the biggest loss of all. But can you imagine that? So... You're, you're, you've got a Leinster team, no James Ryan, no Gary Ringrose, no Josh van der Fleer. There's some evolution going on at the minute, isn't it? Obviously, a, a chunk of that is injuries. No Keen Healy either, who would have, had he been available and came off the bench, he would have broken Ronan O'Gara's record of appearances in the Champions Cup. Bearing in mind Keen Healy's age, I don't know what his plans are beyond this season, but, well, Leinster need to win for Kean Healy to have a chance of winning that record. I know Kean Healy wouldn't care about that. He's more he's more focused on the team winning, but just a little subplot going on there. So Harry Byrne, um, he's the casualty of the 6-2 split. And when you put these things together, the bigger bodies, the 6-2 split, it feels like Jacques Nienarber's fingerprints are all over this selection, don't you think? Tell me what you, what you reckon in the comments. I reckon, and here's a couple of things. So one thing that South Africa did brilliantly during the Rugby World Cup and in recent times, is they often started with their best players on the some of their best players in certain positions on the bench, so that they finished arguably with with the strongest team. That was certainly the case with the, the some of the front rows that came off the bench. There was a quite a period when Malcolm Marks was starting on the bench for South Africa last year, and they were almost finishing games stronger. And I think that's <clears throat> so. I I think you need to stop thinking about the bench, the replacements as the second choice in a position that tactically that there's reasons why you might want to finish the game with some of your most experienced. If you're expecting a tight tussle where one big turnover towards the end of a game could be the difference between winning or losing, Josh van der Fleer coming on with a full tank and 25, 30 minutes to go could win the game for you. So I wonder if there's a bit of that. Equally, I think there's definitely a kind of a South African fingerprint over this with the bigger bodies on the field, Jason Jenkins, and I think that might be what's going on with Will Connors. He's amazing at chop tackles. Will Skelton, Weenie Antonio, and the rest of that juggernaut of a La Rochelle pack. Chop them down, Will Connors, for 50 minutes. Wait till they're tired, and then you unleash Josh van der Fleer. I, I can definitely see the logic. It's a massive, massive uh, game, this one, for Jamie Osborne. He can take a huge stride forward up against Jonathan Dante. Um, I mean, he's got... Jameson Gibson Park at nine, decision maker inside. He's got a guy like Hugo Keenan at the back helping him through it. Um, Robbie Henshaw outside. So he's got everything in place to, to have, a, have a great game. But this feels like a really significant one for him. What do you think of that team then? If you're a Leinster fan, what are you making of it? Let me know as I move over to La Rochelle. And they've got a... This is a stupid team sheet, isn't it? Come on. I have to move right out of the way for it. Uh, but uh, what are the headlines for La Rochelle? Uh, Brice Doulan, not available. So Dylan Lades is at 15. Teddy Thomas and Jack Knoll on the wings. In terms of like, a lot of years under their belt in that back line, when you look at Kerbalo 
and Dante and Suteni, Lades, Noel, Teddy Thomas, Antoine Hastor is like mid twenties, but that's a lot of experience in that back line. And will they have the legs? Because it's a six-two split for La Rochelle as well. Will they have the legs? They've certainly got the nous. Will they still have the gas and the legs? But they've got the experience, and that in big games does definitely come to the fore. And it's where it's where you look at Leinster and you think it's a real shame they're missing Gary Ringrose, and and they've got a kind of raw. 10-12 combo so that's going to be interesting in terms of the pack pretty much as you were and well it's not the strongest pack they could put out they're down to i think third choice loose head prop there's a couple of hookers out as well still very good players that are on the field and any pack that can have paul boudon on the bench is not too shabby but it's not quite where la rochelle have been they're not playing to the level they have done in the last two seasons when they won this competition but in a one-off 80 minute game they'll back themselves and they've got that memory from May of last year of going to the Aviva Stadium and pulling off another famous victory. For what it's worth, I'm going to stick with what I said in my preview video, which was that was like yesterday, wasn't it? That uh, I see this one going Leinster's way. And again, I think a lot of talk is is going to be about the selection for Leinster. And I don't know. Tell me what you think. I think it's got Jacques Nienaber all over it. And that is maybe the biggest battle of all. You've got the personnel that are on the field and, of course, the 46 men that are going to be going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The crowd is undoubtedly going to have a, a huge bearing on this game and it looks like being a sellout in Dublin. So we've had a rumble in a jumble, jungle. Now we've got a ding-dong in Dublin. It's going to be packed. An expectant home crowd are going to be trying to cheer their boys in blue on. But maybe the biggest battle of all in this one, Jacques Nienaber and Ronan O'Gara, two of the brightest rugby minds that there are. His new team, Leinster and Yellow Munster, <laughs> coming over. Ogara Nienaber, who's going to get on top in this one? I'm still sticking with Leinster. I think they're going to. I think they're going to edge this one. I'll say Leinster by eight points. What should I say? Twenty-eight points to. I'm going to say twenty-eight nineteen. Leinster are going to win, but I cannot wait. And that goes for the whole weekend's rugby. Make sure if you haven't already, uh, I, I hit, you hit subscribe on the channel. Um, there's going to be loads of content coming across the weekend. And if you lo love your rugby generally, you can really help me out by giving the video a thumbs up. Smash that like button and it helps me reach other rugby fans because it is just me. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers. I'll see you on the next one.